Okay, welcome back everybody. This is CSIS 4310. Second week, second video lecture. I'm going to try to make it quick. So we were talking about the different technologies that we're going to be using. Now in order for us to create a web application in Java, first of all, without using the Spring Framework, we need to understand how the technology works with a plain, simple web app built in Java. That is, we need to know the concept of a servlet. Okay? So, and this is a project that I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to make available for you guys. We are going to create a very simple project, web application project, in Eclipse using Java. Very similar to what we did with the Java server page. You guys remember the sample that I went through? I know it sounded like um, Chinese to most of you. Although it, sh it shouldn't, because it had HTML, which you, you already know. It had some Java within the HTML, which you should already know. It was just that piece that uses a whole bunch of libraries to communicate to a database and generate the HTML. That part, maybe it's magic to you. But tonight, I'm going to cover exactly what it does to do the magic. So, follow me. Can everybody see that? Okay. It's refreshing, building the workspace. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a brand new project. New project. Okay. It's going to be a Java web project. It's going to be a, a web dynamic web project. Okay? A dynamic web project. Next. Remember, there's, al there's always a wizard for all these different things in, in Eclipse. The project name, we're going to call it our first servlet. Okay? use the default location, which means it will create a folder called First Servlet under Rapid Java, my workspace. The target runtime the target runtime is going to be Apache Tomcat. What did we say we installed? Six? Let me verify that. Apache Tomcat 6.035. 6. So that's going to be our um, runtime environment. Finish. When it talks about the dynamic web module version, don't change it. It will automatically knows that it's a 2.5 because we're going to be using 6.0. Oh, and see later on what that means, the web module version. Leave the configuration, the default configuration for Apache Tomcat alone. You don't want to add any project working sets, so next. To configure the project for building a Java application, we're going to keep the source. This is where we're going to, where we're going to find all the source, the, uh, the servlets. Okay? The source folders will be under SRC folder. And the compiled ones, the compiled ones are going to be under built classes. Next. The context root Can anybody tell me what the context root means? What is that? What's the context root? The context root, it's what you're going to type up in the URL. 
after the domain name, after the port, what you type after that, okay? In order for you to tell via a browser, hey, uh, web server, I need this application, okay? So the application that we're going to be building is for servlet. And the content directory, that's where you will put all the images, cascading style sheets, JavaScript, all the static content, will be under web content folder. Okay? Make sure that you have this generate web XML deployment descriptor checked. When you do that, it will actually generate a web.xml file, which is the file that Tomcat will look into in order to know how to load your project. Finish. And this kind of project is associated, the first time that you try it, it will tell you. This kind of project is associated with a Java EE perspective, which stands for Enterprise Edition. Typically, web applications are enterprise level type of applications. It's not going to be, we're not constructing a Java standalone application. Okay? We're constructing a Java Enterprise Edition project. Do you want to open this perspective now? I always wanted to remember my decision, and my decision is yes. So now we switch from the Java perspective into the Java EE perspective. It has different views and different stuff, okay? But that's the one that we're going to be using when we develop in Java. So here it is. Notice the icons. The icons right away tell you this is a web application. How do you know? You see that little world icon there? That's how it tells you that it's a web a worldwide web application. The J tells you that it's a Java. So this is a worldwide web Java application. You open it and you see all the files that it, it that it depends on. Okay? Like the Java resources, all the libraries, the Apache Tomcat libraries, the enterprise archive libraries, the Java runtime edition system libraries, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay? Those are the Java resources. Now your classes, the classes that we're going to be building, will go into the SRC folder. Okay? The deployment descriptor, look at this. There's a deployment descriptor called first servlet. Now you can look at the deployment descriptor through here to the, notice that it says it's the 2.5, which means it's a deployment descriptor that knows how to interpret 2.5 version deployments. Okay? And it's very important that you keep them in sync because sometimes you want to deploy a 2.5 deployment descriptor project into a Tomcat 3 or into a Tomcat 4, and that Tomcat doesn't know what to do with that. Um, project because it doesn't know how to interpret that deployment descriptor. Well, you can double click on it and when you double click on the deployment descriptor it will actually show you the web XML. That's the source of the web XML. You can also see it through the design. The design will look like this. I like when it's simple I like to use the source. It's It's cleaner. It's easier to, to look at the source code. Now, this is one way of looking at the deployment descriptor through this section. You can also do it through here. Under web content, there's a folder called webinf, and under webinf, you will find that web XML. That's the well-known location for a web XML. Always the web XML you will find it under the web content folder, whatever that is, under a web in folder. That's the web information. Web dash inf. That's a reserve word in web technology. Web information. You will find the web XML. Okay? What does this web XML tell you?
for those of you who already took my CSIS 3020, it tells you that it's what? An XML file, right? That has a display and a welcome file list. The welcome file list has a whole bunch of file names. This is basically you or this project telling Tomcat, hey, this project name is called First Servlet. When you deploy it, you should call it First Servlet. That's the display name. And any of these files could be the startup file. So it will go and look into the index.html. If it doesn't find it, then it will go into the index.html. And if it doesn't find it, it will go and look for an index.jsp, so on and so forth. Okay. <clears throat> and that's about it. The build contains all our compiled stuff, which we don't have any. And it has the capability of knowing about web services, which we're not going to touch at this point. So what are we going to do? Let's create our first servlet. So under the source, we're going to create a new package. The package we're going to call it uh, com sample servlets. Some package name that gives me an indication of what what type of Java classes are going to live inside. Finish. And now under that package, we're going to create a new servlet right there okay we're going to create a new servlet now all this time all these wizards all they're doing it's creating files and folders in the file system in fact if you want you can go ahead and look into your rapid java remember that's my workspace you can go and look. There's a first servlet folder. If you open that folder, what do you see? You see a build, an SRC, and a web content folder. If you open the web content folder, what do you see? Two folders, the meta-inf and the web-inf. If you open web-inf, what do you see? A library folder and a web.xml. I mean, all this time, the wizards, all they do is that. They create files and folders, and sometimes they modify, sometimes they modify the contents of those XML files. We're about to create a servlet. What are we going to call it? Well, first of all, it's for the project first servlet. The source folder is going to be here. The package is going to be here. The class name, we're going to call it my servlet. That's going to be the class name. Okay? Now, notice Notice that immediately, when you say, I want to create a servlet, the wizard knows that this is not going to be a Java class that you create from scratch. This is actually a class that inherits from a whole bunch of other classes that are part of the EAR libraries, the Enterprise Archive libraries. In fact, it's a very specific class called the Java X Servlet HTTP HTTP Servlet class. Okay. Then we're going to go next. The name is going to be my servlet. This is the description will be my first servlet sample serve servlet. Okay. The URL mappings is going to be my servlet, just like that. We're going to, not going to change any of that. No initialization parameters whatsoever. Next. Then, and all this wizard is going to do, it's going to create a Java class. Now, could have we done it another way? Yes, we could have used Notepad. 
and create the whole class ourselves. Nobody tells me that I couldn't do it otherwise. Now, this servlet, which is a Java class, will contain a constructor from the superclass. I mean, we're going to have method stuffs for the constructor for the superclass. It will have method stuffs for the inherited abstract methods, etc. And we're going to implement basically two. We're going to implement two methods inside this Java class: the do post and the do get. In fact, these are methods that are abstract methods from the parent class, the HTTP server class, that you have to implement or overwrite if you want to do your own thing. Now, these two methods, don't they give you an idea what they're going to do? A do post and a do get? If you guys remember back from CSIS 3020, can you tell me what was a get and what was a post? passing the parameters in the URL or behind the scenes, right? That's basically what they do. So a GET is when you call a URL and after the URL you follow a question mark and then you put a whole set of parameters. Name equals value, ampersand. Name equals value, ampersand. And you pass a whole list of parameters, okay? So in that case, you're passing the parameters through the URL and the web server will say, oh, wait a minute, I know how to do that. And it will just parse through them, figure them out, set them into and make them available into the web server in your code so that they, you can use them. In the case of the post, the post, those parameters come from values. Values that the user of the website is entering into some kind of form somehow and then it's sending them to somewhere some URL in the web server they do not show up on the URL they're being posted to the server but they are traveling behind the scenes okay so we're going to be implementing both methods in this server. The do get, which does a get, and the do post, which does a post. Finish. Wow. Look at this. It created, and I'm really sorry, is it too tiny for you guys? Let me, let me change the appearance a little bit. Basic. I think it's too tiny. Let me change it to 12. There you go. Okay? So, take a look at this. It actually created for us a Java class. What's the name of the Java class? My servlet. What does it extend from? In other words, where does it inherit from? From HTTP servlet. And you guys hover over it. Oh, it doesn't tell me the IntelliSense for it. I have to download the source code. We'll do that later on. It extends from HTTP server, which is one of the classes that are available for you in the ear libraries. Okay? And that's why you have to import them right there. You're importing them. JavaX, servlet, HTTP. HTTP server. Okay? And then it gives you the signatures, just the signatures of the do get and the do post. And can you guys tell me what the signatures of those two are? They are the HTTP server request and the HTTP server response. Those two parameters are the ones, are the classes, the objects that you're going to be passing around between the client and the server. Simple as that. You do a request, it creates the request object and tells, hey, here, servlet, here is the request. And it's passed through the HTTP server request. 
then this guy will do whatever it has to do. It has some kind of functionality. It's trying to provide some kind of service for that, for that user. And then it will create the response and say, hey, server, here is the response. And it gives you the HTTP server response. So basically, the request and response are objects of their own, are Java classes of their own. And they're going to have a whole bunch of methods that you have available to manipulate the request and manipulate the response. Okay? So, we don't want to have to create the whole project from scratch. <clears throat> so I'm going to accelerate the whole process a little bit and I'm going to copy a hello world code. This is basically what I'm going to do in the do get. I'm going to replace that to do, which by the way guys, when when you have a to do slash slash to do comment, it will show up in the view called task list, which I don't have right now. I have to show you task list. See this? the wrong one. Show view. I thought it was task list. Maybe I'm wrong. That it shows you all the things that you have to do. Tasks. It's called tasks. Sorry about that. Tasks. So every everywhere you have a to-do, you can just double click on it and it will take you to the piece of code that you need to do. It's pretty neat. So you double click and say, okay, you have to do the auto-generated construct. So if you want something different under the construct of this of this Java class, then you replace that to do. So in this case, we're going to replace this to do with this code. Okay. Now notice that as soon as I replace that code, it gives me an error message and say, wait a minute, print writer? I have no idea what a print writer is. All you have to do is Control Shift O. Control Shift O is the equivalent to right clicking on the code and saying source organize the imports. So it's going to try to generate the imports for you. So if it finds a print writer somewhere in any of the libraries, it's going to say, oh, I know where that is, and it will put the import. Control Shift O. And that's what it did. Notice that it added the Java I.O. print writer. Control Shift O. Or you can just right click on the source and go to source, organize imports. Control Shift O. Okay? And there's a whole bunch of whistles and stuff that it will do automatically. It's stuff for you. But eventually, you know, you, you, you learn those with with practicing. Anyway, what are we doing in the get? What are we doing in the get? All we're doing right here in the do get is the following. We're saying, okay, I'm going to use the response, the response object that we've been passing around here back and forth. The response object, and I'm going to ask from the response object to give me a writer. It's like asking for a pencil, right? Give me a writer. And we're going to call that writer the out. And then we're going to use that pencil, out, to print HTML. In fact, we're going to call the print line method of the out with a string. And the string, all it does is a heading that says, hello world. And then closes it. The print writer, yes, you've got to close it so it doesn't go dry. Right? It's like a marker. And then you close it. End of the story. You have created your first website using a servlet. You want to see it running? What do you have to do? Say, okay. 
let's right click on the project run it on the server what server this server 6.0 that's the one that we install finish it will actually compile it package it put it on the server oh boy sorry about that I have another server this happens to me this happened to me last week also I think I have Apache yeah here it is Apache server listening through port 8080 make sure you kill all your Apache servers or whatever server is listening through port 8080 because if you don't then it's gonna crap on you like this and it's gonna say I'm sorry but somebody else is already hugging up hugging up the 8080 port so I'm gonna try it again run as on the server finish and then it will package deploy it into Tomcat and run it here it is notice and then it's going to launch it's going to launch for servlet it's right here another another thing I'm going to export it this is another way you can deploy your project you can actually export it into a WAR file WAR file stands for a web archive it's nothing else than a zip with all the Java stuff and let's call it the first servlet that's fine the destination we're gonna tell it that the destination is going to be whatever you Adobe on the way whatever you install your Apache Tomcat there is a folder called the web apps folder that's going to be the deployment folder so you're going to create a file name called first servlet.war in the web apps folder of your Tomcat you're going to optimize it for a specific server runtime 6.0 you don't want to export the source files and you want to override any existing file in case there is any existing file you're going to finish and there it is if you go into your file system and you go to your Apache Tomcat you will see that the web apps has a first server that war I see it it just recently deployed so we're gonna start you go, we go into the bin and we're going to start our Tomcat startup Tomcat unblock it and basically the same stuff that we saw on the console of Eclipse is the stuff that it shows in here notice on the DOS prompt and now I'm going to hit it localhost 8080 here it is this is my Apache Tomcat okay so now I'm going to do a slash first servlet what is it called? it's called Timex Web where it is it works so under the Ato Apache Tomcat there is a folder called the work folder the Lina folder local host and under there this is the actual the work folder of the web server so it makes like a copy of what you have deployed and it makes it a copy into the work and it works out of it okay under Timex Web, you will find an org Apache JSP. Look at this. This is my index JSP transformed into a Java class. You want to see it? Here's the source code. It has the same name as my index.jsp, but the dot is replaced by an underscore. So it calls it index underscore JSP. And it adds the dot Java. And look at this. 
this is a class okay that extends from the HTTP JSP base and notice that this class has an init, a destroyed, a service okay and the service is the one that manipulates the response and the request just like our HTTP servlet and look what it has that same pen that I use that same pen that I use it's writing all the HTML look at this read from MySQL database that's the title where did that come from if you guys look at the JSP index JSP title read from my MySQL database that was part of the HTML and this guy generated a Java class that takes this pen and writes that same stuff identical so when it comes to the piece that is not HTML and now we're talking about actual Java code the servlet doesn't do any translation it is Java code that gets put inside the servlet and executed just like you put it in the JSP so to make the equivalence in PHP you guys remember PHP right PHP page was an HTML page that had those starting and ending scripting tags and you will put HTML code in it it will be sent to the PHP interpreter which will translate it into HTML code and the whole thing will just be sent back by the Apache server to, to the browser Apache Tomcat does almost the same thing with JSPs. JSPs is an HTML page that has the starting start and ending scripting tags with Java in it and when it's about to execute it in fact the first time that you hit it that's when it actually compiles it into a servlet. It takes that JSP and converts it into a Java class because remember Java all it knows is Java code and this Java code must be on the fly compiled into bytecode you want to see the bytecode? here is the bytecode it's called index underscore underscore JSP dot class that's the compilation of our the Java, dot Java so what you guys are going to see is that the Spring Framework already uses behind the scenes this concept of servlets you don't have to worry about any of this stuff when you use the Spring Framework. Any of this stuff. You have to know it. You have to know that it exists and this is how it works. But you don't even have to worry about it. Because you're going to be working at a very high level with the Spring Framework. Such a high level that it's going to allow you to concentrate on the system that you're building and none of these needy greedy technologies. Got it? Alright guys, see you next week.